Hello guys, welcome to GT Presence Tech View, uh, another episode. In this episode, I'll show you uh, actually how you can um, do the Windows patching like through the SSCM. So SSCM administration for Windows patching. So there's a uh, multiple things you can do through the SSCM. So SSCM administration has a lot of uh, like other parts, but uh, in this video, I'll show only the Windows patching. So let's get started. All right, so this is my SCCM server. And I have a nice documents, which I will share with you guys uh, on the video, like uh, on the video description, I will share the link of these documents. So exactly if you can follow these steps, um, you'll be able to uh, set up by yourself. So first, before we, before we start doing work on the CCM, uh, I just want to discuss something about the Windows patching plan. Like you have to have your solid plan and based on your plan, maybe you can apply the Windows update. And how are you gonna apply the Windows update? Through SCCM. So Microsoft release Windows update patch every month, second Tuesday. So second Tuesday of every month. That's why second Tuesday call patch Tuesday. So again, Microsoft release patch every month. Not only every month, like you have to remember every month, second Tuesday. So that's why second Tuesday is called patch Tuesday. So based on that, you have to have your plan. So if Microsoft release the patch on uh, uh, second Tuesday, you cannot apply that patch right away on your environment. So you have to have your own plan. So I'm just showing you some plan, but it's up to you. You can follow exactly this or you can have your own in a different way. So how did this Windows patching work through SCCM? Basically, SCCM is connected with WSUS, which is not fully configured. I have a complete video for how you gonna how you can set it up SCCM, which is called SCCM installation and configuration. So I have uh, I have a, a full video, it's like three hours, I think three and a half hours video. It's a long video because it's complete setup for SCCM, which is SCCM installation and configuration. But as an administrator, you don't need to know that part because if you join any company already, maybe they have the setup. But anyway, if you're interested, you can learn from my video. So I will share that video link also on the description box. So this is the plan, SCCM, the SCCM management is connected with the WSUS. It's not a fully WSUS, but some features of WSUS. So SCCM collected collect the Windows updates through the WSUS. So WSUS communicate with Microsoft and it's downloaded the uh, latest update. And that patch, the one WSUS downloaded from Microsoft every second Tuesday, or maybe Depend, or maybe the schedule, you can download it, you can check Microsoft side every week, it doesn't matter, through the WSS, through the WSS schedule. So when WSS download the patch, and that patch is gonna be shows on SCCM inventory. And through the SCCM, you can have some job, and based on your job, you can push the patch. So for example, SCCM has a distribution point. So through the distribution point, in your site, in your environment, maybe you can have a development Windows server, you can have a staging Windows server, you can have production Windows server. So I shows here production Windows server A, production Windows server B. The reason is in some uh, production server is dependent on other, uh, other ones. So if at the same time, which is called like, maybe you can have a cluster uh, SQL server database, or maybe you can have some other cluster application server, right? So it's like if one server goes down, then other one will be active immediately, right? Active and passive. So if you have that kind of setup, so and both machine, maybe one machine, maybe two, two machine, maybe four machine involved with one um, cluster or maybe um, any other things like uh, redundancy. So that's why I have a plan for production. I have plan for two, which is, uh, production Windows Server A and production Windows Server B because you cannot, if you apply uh, Windows Lattice patch, 
to your all production server at the same day. That means if you have any cluster production server, all of them are gonna be restart or down at the same time. That means your application will have a downtime. So more, a lot of the organizations, they cannot afford the downtime. So in that case, that's why may, it's better. It's, it's my suggestion is better to have a two, um, uh, two window. So for production window server A and production window server B. And staging and development, uh, development is completely scratch server. So you can like the, all the developers, the works is, is you can, you can apply the patch anytime, but anyway, you should have a plan. So based on that, I have set up here, say second Thursday of the month after hours, second Thursday. So second Tuesday, Microsoft released the patch on second Wednesday, you're gonna uh, analyze or maybe you're gonna research the patch if somebody else is applied, is there any kind of issues on the latest release or not? So that's what you're gonna identify on Wednesday, second Wednesday. And second Thursday, you can schedule a job to apply the, the latest release patch to your development servers. Maybe you can have 10 development servers, maybe 20 development servers. So all development servers, you can have a bundle and put the patch on the, this schedule. And staging server, third Monday of the month, third Monday, that means not the first and second week, third week, third week Monday after hours. So everything I'm doing after hours because it's a server. So, but in other, in other case, development and staging, you can do the uh, business hours because it's not a production, right? So if it is down for five minutes to reboot the server after the applied, after applied the patch, it's not gonna be affect anybody. So you can do that also in a business hour. It depends on your company's policy. Anyway, but production must you should do after hours. So Monday, you can do the patching on the staging server. So staging server configuration, staging server configuration should be aligned with your production. So if it's gonna be same type of configuration. So on Monday, when you apply the patch to your staging server, and if you see after applying the patch, everything working fine. That means that patch doesn't affect your uh, application. So, right in that case, that's why you're gonna uh, plan on, on Tuesday or Wednesday for the other other production server. So, I schedule Tuesday, third Tuesday, not third second Tuesdays. So, third Tuesday I schedule here after hours for our production server A, and third Wednesday the production server B. And then workstation, workstation, third Monday of the month, third Monday. So second Tuesday release patch, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then third Monday, you're gonna do your all workstation. It can be Windows 10 or 11, whatever. You can apply the patch to one job. You can put the patch uh, for all Windows 10 and 11, but in here, I mentioned business hours. Why business hours? The reason is business hours because uh, workstation is means is used by a user, right? You is end user level uh, or, or end user level device, right? So you you never know when all employees gonna be in office or in the local network, right? Office network. So if the employees is not office network, or maybe they if they don't do the VPN, then you cannot apply the patch to their machine. So that's why this window will be open from Monday morning. And there will be, of course, before you do anything, you have to send a notification one week ahead of time, one notification, then uh, day before you apply the patch, just send another notification to the all workstation users to say, tomorrow we're gonna apply the patch. So make sure you will be available to the network. And, that window will be open for a week or something. So whenever they, the user is gonna be on in, in, in the office network, the patch will apply automatically. And also there is a message will be pop up after apply, patch applied, it's gonna show uh, users like your machine will be rebooted within 10 minutes, save your work or something like that. So this is the plan. So th this plan you can follow, it's up to you. Now I'm going to show you actually uh, the setup. Deploy Microsoft patches in SCCM step-by-step. Step. 
So create a software update group. First, you have to create a software update groups. So I'm going to show you exactly from where you should start. So if you have um, if you have a CCM, that means you will have this. Or this is a my, uh, I'm I log into my um, my SSM server. But without logging to SSM server, you can have this window. How? Microsoft Configuration Manager. If you install Microsoft Microsoft Configuration Manager in any jump machine, also you can do it from your jump machine. And I always recommend everybody to use your jump machine and install all the required tools there. Say for example, beam backup, you need beam backup, install the beam backup management tools to the, your jump machine. You need a Microsoft Configuration Manager like SCCM. So SSM Configuration Manager, install the Configuration Manager on your jump machine and use it from there. That's safe. So think about I'm um, accessing Microsoft Configuration Manager from my jump machine. And this is the interface for the Configuration Manager. So most of the, uh, I, most of the important um, items in, in the uh, left side, all the way left bottom. So administration, there's a lot of things for the administration monitoring, software library, asset compliance. So for administration, like deploying the Microsoft patch, you first need to go software library. Oh, sorry, before you go to software library, do one thing, asset and compliance. So asset and compliance. What kind of asset I have? So devices, if I don't have, because this is my lab, that's why I don't have that many, um, that many devices, but make sure you have Asset and compliance list. So I have some machines here. And if you go to the device collection, you're going to see total I have 11 system. And all of them doesn't have uh, SSM as an install. You see, some few machine has a one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven machine has a SSM um, as an install. So that means uh, those machines, you will be able to communicate. If you look at here, I have, you see Windows 10, Windows 10 shows here, right? So I logged into Windows 10. And if you type SCCM, SCCM as it is installed there. Uh, sorry, when the SCCM, uh, SCCM software is installed, SCCM as it is installed, um, I have a sub separate video for that, how you're gonna, uh, how you're gonna um, install the SCCM as it. Uh, on any Windows box. So that's the separate video. I can, uh, I'll share the um, uh, video link in, in on the description box. So um, this box already installed. So how are you gonna check it? If you type SOFT soft, that means software, you see software center. So when you, you will be able to successfully install um, Windows, uh, sorry, uh, SSCM as an, if SSCM as an is running a, or on any machine, not only Windows 10, in any Windows Server or Windows 10 or Windows 11, in that box, if you search software, you're gonna see the software center. That's why software center is there, because it's active, it's running. So what I'm going to do right now for the SSCM, uh, whatever the available machine I have device from the device collections, I'm going to create some uh, device collection group. You see, create uh, device collection. Create, right click on there, I, I empty place and write the name. So I can use the exactly same name, the one I'm using, development Windows Server, staging Windows Server. Development Windows Server, right? You can have like this and browse. So you have to browse your all system. And from there, you're gonna choose which one you're gonna use as a bad development. So how are you gonna add with this collection? So it's pretty simple. If I go previous, so I just, so far I provided the name and I, uh, I choose the, the all collections, which is by default I got it. So just browse and select all systems and click next. And from all systems, all systems means all systems, including uh, staging, production, AB, uh, Windows Workstation, and your development, everything, right? But this one, we have to figure out which machine is for development. So the, the rules is like you have to add, add rules, and then direct rules, 
and then you're gonna get another window click next and now value so what's the value of this if you know the specific machine name then provide the machine name or you can say uh person sign and hit enter it's going to show you all of them so whatever the machine has sscm as an install and is active in that all machines going to be shown here so think about uh say for example this one i i'm considering this machine as my development witness but in your case, maybe it's multiple, maybe 10 or 20, maybe 50. It doesn't matter. Just select all of them for whatever you want. How are we going to select? Like, like this, like this, like this, right? So I'm not selecting all of them because I don't have that many. So WSS, I'm selecting as a my uh, development. Click next and next and close. So now WSS is added my, in my collection. Okay, and close. So now I have a development window server, right? And I'm going to create another one, create another one. Staging. Staging. Windows server. And same thing, browse all systems, click OK. And click next. And add, add direct rules. And next. And then here, percentage sign. Sorry, hit enter. So from here, uh, say for example, um, say think about this one. This one is skill zero one is my staging. Click next. Click next. In your case, maybe you have multiple maybe 30 40 50 60 maybe 200 server it doesn't matter right just select it and close it and you're gonna see this here click next click next it's pretty simple so so far i click I, I have created two right and then right click this is how you can organize this is how you can organize your environment right and then you can say uh production server a so you're going to create another one is product number b right so that's why i'm just copying this one close and select all systems okay and then click next add rules add direct rules click next and then same thing percentage sign and then click next and say for example uh this one and this one i'm putting as a production a next close click next next and close and then so these groups you just need to create one time and next month you don't need to create again and again right so this is the first time if you don't have it the collection collection so now Action server B, like group B, or you can say group B or something like that. Maybe you can have nice uh, comments or description here. You can say production server group B is up to you, right? And then all systems, click OK, next, and next. Oh, sorry, add rule, direct rule, and click next. Same thing, just percentage sign and hit next or enter and you're going to see. So now I'm adding this one and this one. Sorry, what happened? Okay, I think my server is frozen. Okay. Ooh. I don't know, maybe my, I don't know what's going on. 
Okay, so click next. Oh, it still is frozen. Okay, it's added. Close. Oh my gosh, it's not added. No. Okay, so it shows these two machines, right? Click next. Click next. Okay, close. So it's not showing anything, everything is zero, zero, right? So if it is not showing, you can just right click on it and then you can say refresh. Now it shows, right? And this one, you can say right click on it and refresh. So I added only one and two server here, that's why it showed two. So if you have a 20, then it's gonna show 20. If you have a 200, it's gonna show 200, right? Refresh and right click on it, refresh. All right, so everything is showing right now. And the final one, last one is my workstation. Create workstay. Oh. My system is slow. Work station. So you can say Windows 10 and Windows 11. Browse and then all system. Click OK. Click Next. Add row, direct row. Click Next. Percentage sign. Click next. Windows 10. So I have only one Windows 10, but if you have a Windows 10 and 11, uh, if you have a 500, 5,000, doesn't matter, just select it. And click next. And next. And close it. And then click next. See? And click next. So same way, okay, all right. So I have all the device collections ready based on my plan. So you can have the same plan or maybe you can have different plan based on your company's requirement. All right, so we are ready. And uh, now you need to go to the software library. But before you go to the software library, again, just the way we organize uh, our assets, the same way, uh, I'm going to show you how you can organize your folder as a uh, software library. So the software library, update groups, right? So update groups, I have already created Windows 10, actually not Windows 10, I'm going to delete it, folder, or I can rename the folder. I can rename it Windows 10 and 11. Windows 10 and 11. And what I can do, uh, another one I can say, folder, create a folder, Windows server, any server, 2016, 19, anything, right? Okay, just for organizing, it's not mandatory you have to have it like this. Okay, anyway, so now, the actual uh, deployment settings is start now. So how you have to go to the software library and then software, all software updates, click here. All right, so all software updates and make sure you, like by default, you, can, you will not have this one date released. So if you right click on it, in this place, you're gonna see the list. So you can you can check mark on date released, and that will help you to um, do the like ascending or descending order. You can see the latest date. So seven nine, you see seven nine. How many things is released? Seven nine means if you look at here, seven nine. 
Seven nine is the second Tuesday of the month, right? So second Tuesday of the month. So say now I'm going to create the software library group, like software update group. So for example, um, this one is Windows 11, right? This one is for Windows 11. This one is Windows 11. So I just press on control button on my keyboard and then selecting. So uh, operating system is to So operating system, you see 22H2. This is for, um, this one is for uh, Windows 20, 2022. So Microsoft operating system, okay. Dot net, this one also. So 11, 11 for this month, right? And Windows 10, Windows 10. And anything else for Windows 10? Oh, make sure not ARM. Make sure not ARM. So cumulative update for Windows 11. Uh, cumulative update for Windows 11 is two version. Cumulative update for X64, Windows 10, and .NET. Not ARM. Right there about the ARM. Windows 11, Windows 11. All right, so Windows 10 service stack update and this one. So all these updates, I'm going to select now. Right click when you select all of them. So I just mixed up with Windows 10 and 11 updates and create software update group. Just click on here and then name it. So which month is this? July, right? So Windows updates for So in, in, in the beginning, you can say, in the beginning, you can say, month, this is July, right? July 2024, 20, and then Windows updates for Oh, you can say updates for Windows 10 and 11. That's it. And you can have maybe description also and create. So I have created for Windows 10, right? And then for all other, like this one is for, I know this one is uh, X64, this is for uh, 2022 and 2019, 2016. And this one is for version H20, that means it can go with any other server also. And make sure you, you like July, really all these are July released, right? So I have to check up to here. So all this Windows 10, Windows 2016. Okay. So I have 2022, I have 2019, I have 2016. And I believe there's all. Send framework. Okay, oh, this one also. This is for uh, .NET Framework for 2022. And anything else? All the way top. Let's see. 2016. 2022. This one is for 
it's an Oscar for 2022. If you have something else which is not record for any server, it doesn't matter. You can have a on the bundle. If it is not record, then it's not going to be installed. So it's not going to harm anything. So you just need to select. Okay, all right. So far, I select everything for Windows 2016, 19, and 2022, and just create a group. And you can say July 2024 hyphen updates for Windows Server. All or you can say you can mention 2016, 19, 22, or maybe just Windows servers. That's it. And also you can have a nice description if you want. Have like this. Windows servers 2016, 2019, 2022, or any other things and create. So I have created the crops. Uh, software groups. So where, so after you create the software groups, click on software, uh, software update groups. Then you're gonna see here. You're gonna see here. Now, if you want to move them, you can move them. It's up to you. So since I organized the folder, I can move it. How are you gonna move it? So server. If you click on the server and then right click on it, you can say move. And why are you gonna move here? Okay. So it moves to Windows Server. This one is for Windows 10, right? Right click, move, and Windows 10 and 11, and okay. It's moved, right? So now for Windows 10 one, I can see here, Windows Server, I can see here, it's, right? So software library is ready. Now what do you need to do? Now you need to schedule, deploy. So based on your plan, you're gonna be deploy. So what are you gonna do? For example, server, right? Windows 10, for example, all windows. So all windows, when are you gonna do all windows? Monday, third Monday, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So in my case, third Monday is already today. So I can do it, but tomorrow is gonna be applied. It's fine because it's gonna be open, right? So right click on it and say, uh, deploy. Okay, so deploy here, you can say my, in here you can say July 2024, software updates for software updates, or you can say security updates, or you can say software updates, Windows, Windows up, or you can say Windows updates, Windows updates for Windows 10 and 11, that's it. Or you can have some nice description also here. It's up to you. Now it says select deployment template. Select the browse option. And then this is my workstation, right? So select the workstation, click okay. So that means whatever the machine you added on the workstation device collections, uh, this, this path will apply to all those machines. That's what it means. Click next, record, you can see yes, record, and all success, all messages. Click next. And in here, um, in here, this is the schedule. As soon as possible, or you can say specify time. So if I selected the time, okay, today is 15, Monday, and apply, you can apply at morning time, based on the plan I chose, but the time I'm recording this video is already uh, afternoon. So that's why I'm just choosing, say for example, six o'clock. Uh, now it's, okay, not six actually, say seven. Seven, zero zero PM. I have selected PM, specific date is today's date. You see here, 7.15, 7.15. So it's gonna be start downloading the software. It will uh, like, or it's gonna be pushed to all servers you selected or machine you selected. 
So machine gonna be collect the updates. It's gonna be just only download on in this time, but it's not gonna install. So when it's gonna be start install? Depends on this one, second one. So you can say start the same day. What time? At eight 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 o'clock, eight p.m. Eight p.m. And click next. And in here, just say software update installation. And restart you don't need to do if necessary. You don't need to because we have another schedule to do the uh, all machines. Whenever it's done, it's gonna be schedule reboot. So and in here you don't need to select anything. This one is by default selected, and now only just this one. Have it, you just need to have a check mark and click next, and then Alerts, you don't need to do anything. If you want, you can set up the alerts, but you can just leave it like that. Click next. Deployment package. Uh, create new deployment package, actually. So the deployment package by default is selected, but you don't need to do anything because we have already everything set up. So you say no deployment package, click next. And then in here, um, deployment option, download software updates from distribution point and install. Select this one. And by default, this one is already selected. Click just next, next. Processing will take a little bit of time and all right. So our first schedule is done. Now we're gonna do for the server, but server we have to do four times, right? One for development, one for staging, one for uh, uh, production group A, production group B, right? So do very quickly, right click on it with the same file, just right click on it, deploy. Okay, sorry. And here you're gonna say, um, July 2024, and you can say Windows updates for servers, or you can, or not only servers, but which servers? It's a development. If it is development, say development. If it is, um, if it is for uh, production, then say production group A, production group B. Um, so I'm going to show you only one thing because it's the same thing you have to do again and again, again and again, same. So I'm going to set up a job for uh, production group A. So production group A. And you can have this uh, nice description here if you want, or I am just copying and paste here. And browse now collection. So which collections I'm going to doing for production server A. If I do for production server B, then select production server B. If I do for staging, then do for staging. If I do for development, then select the development. That's the difference, nothing else. And the job configuration is same. The same way, exactly same thing. So requirement, require right? And all message, click next. So the production, when you got the production, Select a specific time. Okay, so production, we want to do it on Tuesday, right? Group A, Tuesday. So Tuesday, what time? We're gonna start at six after hours. 
6 p.m. So 6 p.m. the machine will start download. So we're gonna give the machine time at least one hour just download. The download will take maybe 10 minutes, but still I'm just giving because of the network traffic or all other things, one hour. And then start installation. When What time is gonna server will start the installation? So Tuesday 16, I say, okay, let's start with seven o'clock. 7 p.m. All servers will start the installation and click next. And in here, software installation and check mark this one. Click next. Click next. Deployment package. Say no deployment package. Click next. Uh, download. Download. Click next. And next. That's it. And then now I'm at the same one, the server, I'm going to create another job for, so ahead of time, before your uh, monthly Windows maintenance, or like, you know when you wanna do the right? So ahead of time, you can schedule this. Right after Microsoft release the patch, you will be able to do all those things. Just make it ready. But the deployment schedule should be based on your plan. Deployment. So this one is July 2024 hyphen Windows Server Updates and then you can say D V L O P M E N T development and select the development group development click next and then click next and So actually development, we want to do it on, uh, actually, because I'm uh, I'm behind the dates. It's supposed to be this date, right? 11, but I'm behind the date. That's why I'm selecting this one at uh, six. The server will start and then the deadline. Oh, it's very close. That's why it might be. Okay, let's do one thing. Because let's do it for, let's do it for um, production. Production group B. So click next. Oh, sorry. You have to select production here, right? Production group B. Okay, click next. Required all message. Click next. And the time. So 6 p.m. Actually, this one is uh, B. You want to do it on Wednesday, right? Wednesday at 6 p.m. And deadline is Wednesday. 7 p.m. is going to be start installation, right? So that's it. Click next. Software updates. Check mark this one. Next. Next. And no package deployment. Next. And download this. And there's nothing. And nothing else. And next. And finish. All right. So now if you go to the monitor, Deployment, you're gonna see, you're gonna see the job is already scheduled, but it's not started yet because we we had different, different uh, date and time to implement it. So you're gonna see the status, how much is done, uh, what is not done, and everything you're gonna see from here, from the monitoring tab. Um, So, maintenance schedule. So for maintenance schedule, you have to go to the asset and compliance and then um, device collection. So 
each and every one you have to schedule so we created the deployment right uh, uh we, we created a device collection based on the development production so each and every one you have to set up another thing so right click on it right click on it and then go to the properties which is called a maintenance maintenance uh actual maintenance time that means when server going to be reboot so on general tab on the general tab um member rules okay so if you want to add more machines on the existing development group you can just uh, right click later on so this this is just i said one time right but you added say 20 servers on development windows server uh, collections right but in the later on you need to add more how you going to add it right click on it go to the properties and then go to the membership rules tab and then add rules and then same way just do the type the machine name or maybe uh hit percentage or maybe whatever you know just say again percentage and then hit enter you're gonna get it or maybe say if you know like three letters two letters say for example like this then it's gonna show all the yellow servers here like this but i'm not doing this actually so go back i'm going to cancel actually so for the mention right now I'm, I'm trying to show you maintenance window maintenance window means when you're gonna um like after installation we already scheduled for uh download and installation right but after installation when the server will be reboot so there will be a maintenance time so let's say create one maintenance time here so development server is going to be installed when monthly right monthly uh, monthly second thursday second thursday development right and what time so you can say here say around uh, 11 o'clock or maybe 10 o'clock 10 p.m 10 p.m to 11 59 p.m so how uh, what, almost two hours time you provided to just reboot it. So all the development server after installation is going to be start rebooting. If any server completed the installation at eight o'clock or nine o'clock, but it's not going to be reboot. It's going to be wait for this schedule. That's called that's called a maintenance schedule. So it's up to you when you want. So since my development Windows server is going to be installed, like patch is going to be installed on Thursday, second Thursday, so I select second Thursday month and then the second Thursday, click OK. OK, so sorry. So you can I can also have a nice description here, uh, development. Ma'am, second Tuesday. So if you want, you can change, you can, if you want, you can have multiple you can have multiple one uh, another schedule so whatever the schedule you want to run if you have a multiple then just make sure you have a check mark on it apply and okay and then for production right click on it so each and every one you have to have a maintenance schedule so go to the properties same way and go to the maintenance window and say um production production uh production third okay group b group a group a and that one will be monday sorry monthly the third third tuesday right third tuesday click okay Okay, so I didn't add, okay, let me edit it. What time? So at 10 o'clock PM and then up to 11.59 PM for two hours. Okay, and apply 
and okay. But I forget actually what I did for development. I think I select Tuesday instead of Thursday. Let's, let's recheck it again. Right click on it. Go to the properties. Okay, maintenance window. See, it's Tuesday. Actually, it's not Tuesday, it's Thursday. Oh my God. Thursday and Thursday. Okay, second Thursday. Apply. Okay. So, same way you're going to set up for others. Like I have the other one, just only one. Device collections and group B. Right click on it. And go to the properties. Membership rules, maintenance, error maintenance. You can say, you can have a multiple maintenance rules. And start from, if, okay, it's a production group B. And start from 10 p.m. and up to 11, that means in that time, all the machines gonna be start rebooting. Uh, Fifty nine, so I give like two hours, two hours time almost. PM eleven fifty nine. That's also PM. And monthly. And the third Wednesday. Click OK. And apply, and OK. That's it, that's all. So you are ready. You don't need to do anything. Patch is already approved, the job is already scheduled. If you go to the monitor, you're gonna see your job. So the job is already, um, so every month, what do you have to do? You just need to do this. First, you have to create a software library. Like software updates, you have to create a bundle like for servers and Windows 10 and then, um, And then uh, from the software library, you have to right click on the every every uh, bundles and then say deploy. And from the deploy schedule, you can select the development or staging or whatever. That's how you're gonna uh, schedule the job. And you are done. So every month you're gonna do the same thing, two things. Like create a software update groups and then from the groups just deploy and create and maybe based on your workstation, production A, production B, staging, so five things maybe, most probably five jobs you have to create. So my jobs is ready. So next week, my this patching will be happen. So workstation will be happen from tonight, but these two will be next week, which is scheduled for, not actually next week, this is the third week, right? So that means tomorrow and day after tomorrow. So it's already, I supposed to schedule in here, but I'm uh, late for this scheduling. Anyway, so you should you can do it ahead of time after right after the Microsoft release. You can do in this in this time. So tomorrow, no, eighteenth. So eighteenth, I'll come back again. I will check everything and I'll show you actually is done or not. Hello. So based on our patching window, so patching is done. I'm going to show you exactly. Log into your SCCM console. And then go to the monitor and check your job status. So you see the workstation, production server B, production server A. Those status was before 000, right? Right now, if you click here, it shows 100%. If you click here, it shows compliant to in progress zero, error zero, unknown zero. If you see something in progress one or error one, in that case, you have to do, you have to uh, focus on that machine. And how are you gonna see the status is here? If you click here, view, and it will show you actually how many is done. So compliance section it shows one on two server because I have only added two. But if you have a 500 server, it's going to show you 500. And if out of 500, 
we'll say for example 450 is done another 50 is not done it is in in progress or error or unknown in that case you have to focus especially on those machines maybe you have to install it manually oh like if you want to check on the server level so if you have a 200 server it's not possible to check all 200 but if you find something on the sscm it shows like it's not patched like you are checking the monitoring systems and it shows it's not patched so in that case um so in my case is everything shows 100 percent. you see 100 percent but if something shows here in progress, not patch, or did not reboot, or error, just click here or click the status, like view status. And then <clears throat> for the specific machine, just go to the machine and check. Or you can just to verify, you can check a couple of server. So what are you going to check? This, this is Windows 10 machine. So go to the, this gear icon, settings, and update and security. And then you can check um, view update history. So you're going to see actually when it's applied. And if you look at this one, this is a server. Go here and then look at settings. And if you look at the view history, you're going to see when we apply the patch and that time it's all installed. So this is the way you can check. If you if I want to show you another one, you can check the same way. Just go to the start button and gear icon settings and then update security. And then view update history. So you can see actually your schedule time is you can you can look at the your schedule time, what when you are scheduled it. <clears throat> so based on that, you can see actually it's applied or not. Sometimes like it's rebooted, but it's not showing here. In that case, you have to check actually through the SSCM, the server is rebooted or not. So this is our uh, production server B. That, that one is patched yesterday night, which is uh, on Wednesday 17. And let's see what time the machine uh, restarted. So this is the machine, our this machine and also our added this is 0 to patch on the same day. Um, let's check one of them. So how are you gonna check restart is happen or not? Sometimes restart says in here it says restart pending. That means somehow the machine is restarted, but um, SSM wasn't get the update. In that case, you can run, run summarize or refresh. You can multiple times you can run it, and also maybe you can do the manual reboot. So I'm going to just check. And so how are you gonna check actually when it's rebooted? So there is a command. So first you have to go to the event management. E V E N T. If you type event, you don't see event viewer. Sorry, not management, event viewer. So when you see the event viewer, let me actually minimize this one. Okay. So on the server, the one you are suspecting that like it's not patched or it's not restarted. How are you going to confirm the server is restarted? Uh, server is rebooted after the installation. So you have to go to the event viewer and I make it and maximize it and go to the Windows log, expand it, and then go to the system. And from the system, there's the, it's it gonna be like, it gonna, it's recorded like thousands of thousands of events. From thousands of thousands of events, how are you gonna figure out which one is your reboot log, restart log or reboot log? So you can filter it, filter current log and 1074. So 1074 is ID. It's a code, it's the ID for restart. And click OK. Now you're gonna see the all restart. You see 717 at 10 o'clock. So we started our restart um, at 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, right? Exactly 10 o'clock. Maybe server patch before 10 o'clock, but it's wait for the schedule, which is code I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this schedule. If you go to here, uh, no, not here. Software library. Update groups. Sorry, I have a schedule for like this. Any one of them. Oh, sorry, not here, not here. You have to go to the asset and compliance and device collection. Okay, so this, for example, this device collection, right click on it. 
and go to the properties. I'm just repeating it because I will explain it previously when we create a, like a device collection. So all the way right, it says maintenance window, click here, you see, you remember we created a maintenance window. And if you go to the edit option, select this one and go to the edit option, you know, see it started at 10. So that means when you put the patch is downloaded at some, like we, I think scheduled for seven down, seven o'clock is gonna be start download, eight o'clock is gonna start install. But if any server install, say for example, is done with eight, 30 minutes, that means 8.30 is finished the installation, but server will not be start a reboot. So you're gonna wait for this schedule. And if some server like installation time is take too longer, longer than usual. So if it is go over 10 o'clock, then still this window will cover. It's up to 12 o'clock. So that's called a restart. Actually, it's the restart schedule, but we call it a maintenance window. That's the actual maintenance window. So based on our maintenance window, we found the log here. See, at 10 o'clock is restarted, rebooted. If you look at here, the process window C, the blah, 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 has initiated the restart of computer, realize this on behalf of user and the authority system following region. So who restarted? NT authority system, that means automatically it's restarted, not by the user. So you can see, look at from here. You see on 521, on behalf of user ELS administrator, that means this one is manually restarted by the administrator. So this is the log you can check like this. Now I'll show you if any one of the server is not patched, in that case, how are you gonna start patching? Say manually patch, right? So go to the software library and check uh, what kind of updates is this? Okay. For example, Windows Server, right? <coughs> so Windows 2016, say KV5040. So just open the Google Chrome. And I'm going to just type KV5040. Four three four four three four. Okay, all right. So I'm going to show you here, and so I just type the KV number and hit enter, and it's going to show you July nine. It's a KV build, and you can say download. Microsoft update catalog. So all the time when you type the KV number with download, it's going to give you multiple options, but all the time, just find out this one, Microsoft Update Catalog. So go here, you can just open another window and you're gonna see here, um, for 16, right? The same patch, same KB number is released for Windows 10 version also. So it depends on you for what you are looking for. So if you're looking for 2016 server, then just go to 2016 and say download. And Click here. Okay, so it's here, it started download. But it's a uh, 1.6 gigabyte, it's gonna take time. So after you download, then move the file to your uh, destination. That means whatever the server you think is not patched, just move the patch to that server. Maybe you can pay, like um, move it through the share storage or something. <clears throat> and then install on that machine manually. Just right click and install next, 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 next. This is the way. But manual installation will, will take you sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes one hour. It depends. And I think that's all. And, and also I'm gonna attach these uh, documents. Uh, I put these documents like, may I, I will upload it my Google Drive and share the link with you guys. Uh, on, I put the link on the description box. And thank you, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope this video will help you. Uh, it, it will help all the administrators because SCCM um, administrator, if you know only the SCCM, you have a job. So I, from the administration side, I, in this video, I just explained about how you're gonna patch your Windows environment. 
but there will be a lot of other involved maybe linux but linux you cannot do through the sccm but you have to follow the other system and also there is a third party tools each and every server will have some uh, third party tools so how are you going to apply that third party tools update uh, I will, i'll make another video for that and also uh, most of the time if you you if you guys um, like if your organization run a vmware environment in that case maybe you will face some problem with the vmware um, tools update so I'll, I'll I'll make a separate video for BMR tools and also I'll make a separate video for how you're gonna apply third party tools update. So I'll show a step by step. And thank you, thanks for watching. If you think this video will help you, please um, make, make, give a big thumbs up and also make some comments and your comments will encourage me to make more videos for you guys. Um, and also if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. Thank you, thanks for watching.